Hey guys, Meat Brothers, Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather. And my first stop is to the Tetons because I've got new snow hitting the Tetons today, tonight. Um, light to moderate accumulations, which would mean 12-11 Monday could be a powder day for Grand Targhee and Jackson Hole. Take advantage of that because after 12-11, the pattern is much, much drier for the Intermountain West. All right, let me take you into Colorado. A brutal day. You know, I, I advertised this on, in, during my afternoon update yesterday. It's very windy. This is the view from Loveland Ski Area, 12.7, so above tree line, and 30 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts with single digit air temps, um, and we're shrouded. We could see some light accumulations next 24 hours, so that's what you're going to find very low visibility and a lot of wind in Colorado uh, along those front range high peaks, Indian Peaks, Longs Peak, Cameron Pass, those areas today. Uh, brutal. All right, here are my uh, bullet points. You know, in all honesty, looking ahead at the pattern this week and next weekend, it's very light. This is not going to be like the last two or three weeks where we get these big shots of snow. Not even close. Um, there's one exception. The potential for some moderate accumulation, southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, 12, 13, 12, 14, with the potential of an area of low pressure that pops up, develops in southern Colorado. That's not locked in yet. Um, I'll also take a look at the northeast. There's a storm system for um, today into tomorrow, rain over the snow for the northeast. We'll look at that coming up. But I want to take you back and show you water vapor satellite imagery. So got an area of low pressure here, another small area of low pressure. Both of these are really fast because the flow looks something like this. It's coming up over the top. And then it's really trough. It's a big trough out to these where that area of low pressure is. Um, but this is the flow. So these are all minor, um, only spreading streaks of light snow across the Intermountain West. The biggest snow is going to be in B.C., Washington State, and Banff with this type of pattern. In fact, here's the forecast radar and satellite. So by the time we get into Monday morning, you can see the very light streaks of snow kind of moving through the Intermountain West. Again, down into Colorado shrouding everything up. It's the same thing, 12, 12, 6 o'clock in the morning, 12, 12 in the afternoon. Now at this point, the energy is now all south of Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and for that matter, the Wasatch. Everything is sort of congealing, gelling down in southern Colorado, northern New Mexico. Watch 12, 14. Boom. So an air flow pressure might develop, and that could spread some moderate snow through the southern mountains of Colorado, northern New Mexico. Um, and there it is on 12:14 as well in the morning, and then it starts to pull away after that. And, and notice everything else is dry. I got nothing for California. I, I mean, after that initial maybe one inch in the Wasatch, there's nothing. There's nothing additional after tonight, tomorrow morning for the Tetons, uh, Montana, or even Idaho. So this is a different pattern. It's not the best of patterns for sure. But let's talk about the jets. So initially 12-11, um, a lot of the energy is being directed up into Washington State, B.C. and Banff, and then we're just getting the scraps. Just getting the scraps across the Intermountain West. Okay, so when do things change for California? Well, potentially not until after 12-18. This is 12-19. We can see there's a little trough air flow pressure that may swing into California after that. Um, but that's really the only hope. I mean, we're gonna, it's going to be a waiting period for sure. So I'll do this in phases. Snowfall accumulation um, today through the 12th. Uh, again, you could pick up, you know, one to three through Montana, Idaho, maybe a four inch amount in Brundage. And there's that moderate accumulation. You want to take advantage of that. That happens tonight, today, tonight, and curtails into early 1211 in the Tetons. So take advantage of that on 1211. Ski the Tetons if you have a chance. Very light snow for the Wasatch. I debated whether I even include an inch. Um, central and northern mountains are going to be shrouded with, you know, the scraps coming down on that flow uh, of Colorado, central and northern mountains. Here's the second period, 12, 13 through 12, 4, 4, 15. Everything shifts into southern Colorado, northern New Mexico with that potential low. Look where the big totals are, though. Whistler, Baker, Rainier, uh, B.C., Banff. That's where the better flow is going to be. In the final period, man, there's just nothing here. 1216 through 1219, again, you can almost see the beginning of something in California on 1219, but most of the accumulation is up in BC, Washington State, 
in Banff. All right, northeast, powerful jet in the 1211, supporting that area of low pressure. But again, it pushes nor it pushes the ski areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine into rain initially on 1210, changing over to snow on 1211. Here's the forecast radar for 1211 in the morning. The changeover has occurred. You've got snow falling in northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and northern Maine, with snow wrapping back into New York State. So accumulation 1210 through 1219 in the northeast, about a foot through Sugarbush, Mad River, Stowe, Jay Peak, and Whiteface for that matter, probably a 7 to 10 inch, maybe 12 inch snow for uh, New York State, and some moderate accumulation northern uh, New Hampshire, northern Maine. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this period. Uh, appreciate you tuning in here, and take care.